This video is brought to you by CyberGhost VPN. December 18th, 2017, a Mexican YouTuber threw a party in the city of Jalisco. Despite the warnings he got from a notorious cartel not to ever step foot in the same city. But before we get into those details, here are five celebrities murdered by Mexican drug cartels. Number 5. Sergio Vega Jose Sergio Vega Cuamea was a famous Mexican singer killed by a Mexican cartel for one of the worst reasons you could imagine. Born on September 12, 1969, Sergio, who went by the stage name El Shaka, was a regional Mexican singer. He was born in Ejido Orno, Sonora, located near Ciudad Obregón in Mexico, and was the eighth child of 13 children in his family. Growing up, there were little to no opportunities for Sergio to take advantage of, so in 1989, he relocated to the US where he joined his brother's musical group in Phoenix as a singer and bajo sexto player. The group Los Hermanos Vega later signed with Joey Records and released numerous hit songs such as Corazón de Oropel and El Rayo de Sinaloa. Sergio Vega's time with the group helped him launch his musical persona, and after five years writing with this group, he had a fallout with his brother and decided to leave. He then created another group, Los Rayos del Norte, and signed with a new record label, Digital Universal. They released numerous hit albums while Sergio's fame continued to surge. However, he made one big mistake, getting involved with the Narco Corridor's genre of music. In case you didn't know, Narco Corrido is a genre of romanticized ballads set against a polka beat that recount in glamorous detail the lives, loves, and murderous exploits of Mexico's most feared cocaine barons. Kinda like singing about their accolades. So you might be thinking, why the heck would anyone sing about that? Well, for starters, the life of these kind of singers can be very lucrative. Drug lords who make billions of dollars from trafficking cocaine and other substances to the US don't mind paying tens of thousands of dollars to see these singers to, in a reporter's words, immortalize them in special commissioned songs. But the downside to it was, when a song is made to glorify a particular drug lord, the singers instantly become target. It's for the drug lord's enemies who hate seeing their rivals glorified by anyone, and Sergio Vega was not exempted from this rule. However, one after another, Narco Corridos singers began disappearing or getting murdered in cold blood, including Grammy-nominated singer Sergio Gomez. Gomez was the frontrunner of the band Que Paz de la Sierra, but after performing at a concert in the state of Michoacán, Gomez was kidnapped along with his singers. His body was found strangled to death seven days later in another town. If you were Sergio Vega, you'd run for your life, right? Seeing that one of the biggest singers in your genre just got murdered for the type of songs you sing would instill a level of fear in any man, but not Vega. And after the death of Gomez, the media began circulating the news that Vega himself had been killed, but he was still alive. He was even interviewed by a Mexican entertainment website where he spoke about the rumors being untrue. He said, and I quote, It's happened to me for years now. Someone tells a radio station or a newspaper I've been killed or suffered a terrible accident. Then I have to telephone my dear mother, who suffers from heart trouble, to reassure her that, in fact, I am still alive. Sadly, out of his bravery, foolishness, or maybe both, Sergio Vega was murdered while on his way to perform at a village festival concert in the Mexican state of Sinaloa. At around 9.30 p.m. on June 26, 2010, a gang armed with auto weapons and a white truck drove up to his speeding red Cadillac and opened fire on him. The 40-year-old singer's assistant, Sergio Montiel, was also in the car and who miraculously survived, told the reporters that after the vehicle was forced off the road, the gunman ran up to the passenger side where Vega had been sitting and finished him off with shots to the head and chest. More than 30 bullets were found in his deceased body with half that number being aimed at his torso. And when the news of his death broke out once again, his mother never received a call from him. His death and that of Sergio Gomez moved the Mexican government to place restrictions on Narco Corrido music and even pushed social networks like YouTube to remove dozens of videos from their platform. Sergio Vega was a good man who sang the songs he did out of the fame and money it brought. 
However, he refused to pay attention to the repercussions, and I guess it's safe to say that they caught up with him. Number 4. Juan Luis Lagunas Rosales Lagunas was a Mexican YouTuber, popularly known as El Pirata de Cuyacan, standing for Pirate of Cuyacan. Born in Sinaloa, Juan's childhood was pretty tough. He grew up without a father, and his mother hardly worked. He was left in the care of his grandmother, but there was just so little she could actually do. It's also worth noting that Juan's childhood neighborhood was just a few kilometers away from that of the infamous drug lord, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. However, Juan didn't have any encounters with the narcotics underworld opportunity until he decided to drop out of high school and seek a better life in the city of Cuyacan. You see, when he got to Cuyacan, Juan took up a few menial jobs to sustain his living. But as he did this, he entered an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. I mean, this guy was drinking on the job, away from the job. At any point in time in between, he had a bottle of liquor with him. The worst part is he wasn't even old enough to drink. But the twist of the story is that the unhealthy relationship with alcohol made him famous. He started a YouTube channel posting videos of himself consuming large volumes of whiskey and beer and then show his reaction to getting drunk. Sounds a bit retarded, but for some reason, his videos got enormous amounts of views and reactions from the public. He also tried to add some sense of humor to his videos, making him blow up in a very short period. He had over a million followers on his Facebook page and over 300,000 followers on Instagram. In fact, Juan got so famous, he began appearing in music videos and TV shows. From there, Juan's life took a drastic turn for the worst. He began posting photos to his grand page that weren't really accepted by the older community, given this kid was just 17 years old. He was seen with guns, luxury cars, and of course, very beautiful women, who were more times than not dressed in sultry style. And just when you think that lifestyle must have led Juan down the path to being killed by a Mexican drug cartel, it actually didn't. Instead, he turned a new leaf after he met a guy named Beto Sierra. Sierra was a mastermind behind social media management, and his friendship with Juan helped Juan re-establish his online presence. He moved away from the whole alcohol drinking scene and delved into a more marketable content creating things like his own merch and trying to become a singer. But regardless of Sierra's influence in his life, Juan was like a ticking time bomb. And sooner than anyone expected, his time was up. Juan made it known on countless occasions that he had numerous enemies, and he wasn't afraid of any of them. And in a video in which he appears to be wasted, Juan insulted Nemesio Segueta Cervantes, also known as El Mencho. He said, El Mencho a mi me pela la verga. Which loosely translates to El Mencho suck my, you know what. And I mean, try to mess with any cartel, okay, but El Mencho? That was way overboard. El Mencho is the leader of the notorious New Generation Jalisco Cartel, aka CJNG, in Mexico. To some extent, even El Chapo and his cartel never like crossing paths with these guys, because their level of brutality and violence has gotten into another realm. However, Juan crossed the line, and although he was drunk, he didn't stop there. The CJNG then issued a warning to Juan to never step foot in the city of Jalisco again, unless he wants to be killed. However, Juan stubbornly went ahead to throw a party at a bar in Jalisco. December 18th, 2017, a group of armed men entered the bar where Juan was partying and blasted his soul away from his body with more than 18 bullets fired at him from multiple high caliber guns. Juan's body sustained so many injuries that the only thing used to recognize him were his tattoos. With his death, Juan became more popular than he would have ever imagined. He was featured in Rolling Stone magazine not for his life, but for his death at the hands of the CJNG. An article about him by the Univision reporter read, He opted to make a career as broken toy of cyberspace, a path he carved out drink by drink, and that left him with the enemies of flesh and blood. As for his friend, Beto Sierra, who tried to save him from the evil path he was going down, he wrote in an Instagram post after hearing of Juan's death, you were living a fast life. You never listened, and I don't judge you. Those who knew you knew you were a good person. This was just one of those times when it was obvious that El Mencho wasn't the guy to mess with. 
So while you may not have to watch out for El Chapo, that doesn't mean you're safe in every aspect. Hackers and malicious websites are always on the hunt, and without a solid VPN, you'll be at risk of them stealing your data, credit cards, or maybe even looking at you through your webcam right now. So a huge shout out to this video's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN. Because with them, all your traffic goes through a secure VPN tunnel, meaning your IP address and all your data would be encrypted. And that'll effectively say bye bye to all those scammers. CyberGhost VPN has more than 38 million users and 5 stars on Trustpilot, so it's definitely one of the best VPNs on the market. And with their strict no logs policy, no one, not El Chapo or even CyberGhost, will know about your online activity. The product's super easy to use, and in just a few clicks, you can access geo restricted content from websites, YouTube included, social media networks, go and find better deals online, play games blocked in your region, protect your identity by keeping your data encrypted, and even blocked libraries of over 40 streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and many more. Their subscription comes with a 45-day money-back guarantee, 24-7 customer support, so it's literally a no-brainer. Not only that, they've hooked us up with the best deal ever for you guys. A whopping 84% off, that's just $2.03 a month, plus four months free. So click on that link in the description to keep your identity and data free from any malicious attacks, and thanks to CyberGhost, the best VPN out there for sponsoring this video. And now let's get back to our video. Number three, Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro. Leslie Ann was a Mexican celebrity, YouTuber, and influencer. She was murdered for revealing some intricate details she had about the cartel. Leslie, who was commonly known as Nana Palucas, always posted videos about politics, makeup tutorials, and daily vlogs about her life. Soon after, she took up an online personality of a lady wearing a black afro wig, red lipstick, and gigantic lenses. She would often go to the supermarkets and interact with people. You know, like the millions of things we see on TikTok. But after a while, Leslie's audience grew larger, and she decided to switch up that content to expose corrupt Mexican government officials. But Leslie was smart about it. She didn't just outrightly insult or expose these individuals. Rather, she conveyed these messages in a comedic tone. But the messages were still clear, and it pissed off a lot of people. Now obviously, there's no harm in accessing freedom of speech, right? Well, in a country like Mexico, it kinda is. And other places? I mean, just from the year 2000, more than 150 big-time journalists have been murdered in the most cruel ways. And Leslie was just another statistic. The road to her demise began when she began reporting on the activities of Mexico's most silent cartel, the independent cartel of Acapulco. I bet you haven't heard of them before. And that's because these guys operate in the shadows. The cartel is mostly composed of former members loyal to a high-ranking member of the Beltran Leva cartel, Edgar Valdez Villarreal, who was arrested in September 2010. The group is responsible for several homicides in Acapulco and is part of the wave of smaller local gangs operating in the area. Now back to Leslie. After Leslie made her activities known to the public, she began receiving death threats with banners thrown around the restaurant she owned, accusing her of working with other cartels to expose them to the Mexican government. However, Leslie obviously denied these accusations, stating that she had no affiliations with any cartels, but that the information on her channel was from a reliable source. She didn't stop posting and allegedly exposed the cartel, making her a threat to their organization. And so on February 5th, 2018, two men walked into her restaurant while she was working a night shift. They ordered two beers before opening fire on Leslie. They shot her three times in the head, killing her instantly. Thankfully, one of the Sicarios responsible for her death, El Pipas, was arrested by Mexican authorities. However, this is where the story gets interesting. During his trial, the judge presiding over the case dismissed the charges against him, stating there was an insufficient amount of evidence. And believe us when we say there was all the evidence in the world to convict El Pipas. All this case proves is that Leslie was right to call out the corruption in the country. Cartels had their way of bribing judges and even top government officials to escape from the law. We can even take Chapo's prison escapes as an example. 
Leslie died trying to expose the independent cartel of Acapulco. And it wasn't until her death that foreign bodies began investigating the affairs of this cartel in Acapulco itself. Now, during their investigation, they discovered that Acapulco was such a dangerous place to live in, it was named the second most dangerous city in the world. The United States even placed a special travel ban on its citizens to visit that area. Leslie thought exposing the city of Acapulco to the public and the Mexican government would make a difference. She had the determination to stand up for justice, and sadly, she had no idea the corruption was more deeply rooted than she had ever imagined. Despite her commitment to journalism, she missed the one thing that makes cartels thrive, and that's power. Number two, El Compa Jorge. April 18th, 2022. Famous Mexican businessman and YouTuber El Compa Jorge was gunned down right in front of his house by two armed men after he released a terrifying statement against a notorious Mexican cartel. Jorge started in the world of fame as a simple YouTuber. He posted simple vlogs and storytime videos. But saying there was a bigger audience for him in the car niche, Jorge began making vlogs about cars. But looking back, it's safe to say that it was the wrong decision. I'll tell you why. In the city of Cuyacan, where Jorge's from, cars attract the attention of everyone, including cartel members. Jorge once made a video where he talked about how he was kidnapped in Cuyacan. According to his story, he was out with a friend at a party, having a couple of drinks. The friend asked him if they can head back home, but also wanted Jorge to carry along a mutual friend. Jorge, being the kind man he is, decided to have a plus one. But on the way home, he noticed the sudden urge to throw up, as he had one too many drinks at that party. And when he couldn't hold it anymore, he decided to park roadside and just let it out. But as he did, a car pulled up from behind, and a man stepped out holding a rifle. Before Jorge knew what was going on, the man placed his head in a bag and shoved him into his vehicle. When they got to their destination, the armed man met up with a few of his colleagues and they dragged Jorge into a secluded area where they tied him up and began questioning him. They asked what the source of his wealth was and if he was into drug trafficking, but Jorge responded by telling him that he was only a businessman who owned a tortier shop and nothing more, but they didn't believe him. I mean, who would? He barely had up to 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and owning this shop definitely doesn't seem like the kind of business that would fetch him that type of money to afford such a luxurious collection of cars. They kept him for hours, beat him, and hit him numerous times to tell the truth, but Jorge had already told his truth. Then they left him with no other option than to kill him. One of the kidnappers cocked his gun and pointed it at his head. At that point, Jorge knew it was all over. So he pleaded to him they should dump his body on the roadside where his family could gather him up and give him a befitting burial. Something about that statement sounded very genuine, even to these kidnappers. So they decided to spare his life. They untied him and told him to wait five minutes after they left before he could take off the blindfolds. Now, there are a lot of loopholes to this story. Like what exactly happened to his friends in the car? Did they follow? Did they call the cops? And were the kidnappers really cartel members? While Jorge didn't share these minor details with his audience, he saw the surge in interaction on his channel after uploading the video that talked about his kidnapping. So he decided to do a little more cartel content for YouTube. He released another video where he was talking about the time he met one of El Chapo's sons and went into detail about some other stuff we really can't say here. But the bottom line is Jorge's video revealed a little bit too much and he became a target. So on April 18th, shortly after he posted an update to his socials revealing all his plans for the day, a truck with numerous armed individuals pulled up in his front yard and spread bullets to every corner of his body. Neighbors heard the gunshots and called the ambulance, but Jorge died en route to the hospital. Some say he should have moved out of the city after that kidnapping incident. Some say he should have never steered his YouTube channel in that direction. And others say the kidnappers were probably one of his friends. But the killers are still out there, and the case is still unsolved. And number one, Super Chinello. A quick warning, this story might scare you more than you think. Ruben Ortega was a passionate YouTuber known online as Super Chinelo. He embraced a huge part of Mexican culture from Tlayacapan in the state of Morelos. 
He brought the awareness of his audience who were mostly foreigners to the dance and culture of his people. He would live stream events wearing his trademark red mask and makeup to add a sense of humor to his online character. He was loved so much by the locals who saw him as a happy man, showcasing their culture and heritage to the world. And although he wasn't all that famous, Super Chinello's death sent shockwaves around the world. August 31st, 2022. Ruben, his wife, and their four-year-old son were all returning home from an event when a wave of violence erupted around their neighborhood. Ruben hurriedly got out of his car to open the gate to his house, but immediately he was gunned down, shot 10 times. His wife was seriously injured, and their son was fast enough to escape the scene unscathed. The news of his death was made known on his Facebook page with a post that read, Unfortunately, everything is true. Our friend and colleague Ruben Ortega passed away. Thank you for showing your support. Now the big question, why was he killed? Well, there's no answer to that. Ruben was just another victim of circumstance in the continuous war between Mexican cartels. Some say he had previously criticized corrupt politicians in some of his YouTube videos, and that might be the reason for his murder. While we can't say for certain if it's true or not, Ruben's death made everyone have a sense of resentment against the Mexican government. This was a guy who had done no wrong, who was a father, a husband, and a friend to everyone in his community, who only wanted to bring out the heritage of his people. Yet the government couldn't protect him. Mexico failed him, failed his family, and most importantly, failed his son, who would grow up traumatized and without a father. It became very clear that any and everyone in Mexico was in harm's way. Ruben's killers remain out there, adding his name to the list of thousands more who have been killed innocently in the wave of violence plaguing the country as a whole. His death sent a message that no matter how much you choose to stay away from the violence of drug cartels, no one is safe. And that's a scary thing to comprehend. Be sure to click the link in the description to get that limited discount CyberGhost VPN has offered for all you guys. Take a stance and protect your data while browsing all your favorite geo-restricted content for just $2.03 per month.